quilters. My name is Marcia Nagel and I'm coming to you from Pine Needles Quilt and Sew in Rochester, Minnesota with a new edition of Monday Morning Quilting Quickies. Today we're going to make this ever so cute little mini poppins bag and this may look a little kind of difficult but it really isn't. It is, it is once you get the concept of it it's pretty easy. It has this double zipper and then as you can see, I can just pop this open like this. So Poppins bag. It has metal stays in here that make it a lot more sturdy and that you're able to do that, to pop that open and closed and open and closed. And so it's really rigid here, up here. And on the inside, you can see it has some really fun pockets to put all of your things. This would be great as a cosmetic bag. Um, a bag like to take to ball games with your um, bug spray and all that kind of stuff, maybe little snacks that you need for the kids. I am going to put my sewing um, supplies in here for retreats. But you can see then too that it just closes, fold, closes really easily as well. And then double zippers to make it extremely functional. So what you actually need to make this is three different fabrics. And as you can see, I chose um, the lighter blue for the top, for the main fabric, and then the darker fabric because this sitting on different surfaces might get dirty. And then I chose a bright orange for the inside. Actually, I didn't choose these fabrics. Um, Alyssa, one of my staff. <laughs> Um, people chose them for me. She did a great job. I absolutely love them. So for the sample that I'm going to show you here today, I have chosen this floral fabric for the main fabric for the bag. Um, this one is for the lining and the pockets on the inside. And then this darker um, maroon for the bottom of the bag and then for all the binding pieces. Additionally, you're going to need a um, zipper, a handbag zipper with two zipper pulls on it. These we have in the shop. You can buy them anywhere. These are um, zippers that the brand is by Annie. Great zippers for this. And then not exactly necessary, but oh, if you want to be quick about it, these are um, Craft Techs by Basel. And this is double sided fusible and this is really sturdy rigid stuff and these are pre-cut for this mini poppins bag it, they're absolutely marvelous and then also i have pre-cut um the double sided bozeville um foam and this is for the zipper tabs as well these are for the two sides and the zipper tabs and then additionally, of course, you're going to need your pattern and all of the instructions are in here. And then it comes with a set of stays. So you can buy the pattern with the stays the first time and then you can purchase these separately if you want to make more bags later on too. So first of all, we need to go to the iron and iron some of this stuff, uh, our front and back onto this um, foam. So I'm going to take you to the iron and we'll, I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so here we are at the iron, and I have a wool mat on the bottom. I absolutely love these, and I also have a fusing mat on top, and I love these too. Um, this is kind of the same thing I think that we that I use in my oven for uh, sill pat um, cutting sheet. It's pretty thick though, so I keep this on the bottom to protect my wool mat, and then we're gonna put our um, foam piece on here and then our fabric over the top now they're exactly the same size um, but what's going to happen here because I have this on the bottom this has sticky on the back too this is going to keep this from you know sticking onto anything else and this will release it right away so I can put the other side on there too and then on the top while I could have two of these I did try it it doesn't work because this is too thick so on the top, I'm just put a plain piece of kitchen parchment paper, and that lets the heat go through. But um, now I could put my iron directly on this, and I will maybe a little bit after I get, but I don't want any of this to get on my iron, some of the edges, just in case it's not exactly right. 
And for this, you're going to have to use a really hot iron. This is my Laura Star iron that I just absolutely love. And this is going to take a little bit of time to get this all stuck down. I apply a little bit of pressure. And then the nice thing about this parchment paper too is that um, it just the iron just slides on it really nicely. So I'm gonna get this all stuck down. And I'll check here. And yep, it looks pretty good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna put one of our lining pieces on the back. And just exactly the same procedure. Smooth it down. You can use the same piece of parchment paper to do everything. Apply a little bit of pressure and get it all stuck down. Now I'm going to work on this a little bit more, but um, then it will be a piece that looks like this. Um, and you're going to do exactly the same for the other side of the bag. Okay, so we're back here at the sewing table. And as you can see, I have the fronts and backs. And they're really, really pretty rigid, which is really, really nice. So we have those done. And then while I was there, too, I just went ahead and did the, the zipper pulls, tabs. And you just do this on one side. And we'll make those later. But as long as it was at the iron, I thought I would do both things. So what we're going to do here, we know that this is 16 inches. I better check directions just to make sure that we cut those 16 inches. We did. So that means the middle is 8 inches. And I see my cutting board's coming apart a little bit here. So I have a 7-inch ruler and I have a another little 4-inch ruler. So if I line this up at the edge, I know that this is... The center, seven inches plus one inches, is the middle of this. Now, we're going to mark this because these are going to become our quilting lines. So you can see in here, these are all the quilting lines. And <clears throat> for this one, I am going to use this sew line pen. This one is air erasable. And it says air erasable right on here. Because I'm going right to the sewing machine and sewing these air erasable is fine in a few hours this will these lines will all go away if i wasn't if i wasn't sure that i was going to be able to get these done right away then i would go ahead and use this water erasable and this there's a little spritzer that you can use to get the the lines off and to tell the difference i've done this before i've used this thinking it was this is and hello uh, blue or pink blue or pink blue for agua water water is blue this one erases so water erasable is blue and this one is air erasable which I like for projects like this when we know we're going to be doing them right away so what we're going to do here is we're going to mark um, one line every inch Kind of hard to see under there. I'm just going to mark one side here real quick. And I think I need to um, press a little harder and maybe go over a couple of times. There we go. So we can see it a little bit better. And you're going to go across for six lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then what you're going to do, and it tells you in the um, in the in your pattern instructions, it marks very clearly. I would mark on this side too, but on um, line number two here. And then over here on this line. 
three, four, five, line two and five. You're going to mark here with a um, pin on both sides because these are, we're going to do later and these are going to make the pockets on the inside. So we're first just going to quilt these and I'm going to go over to my machine after I finish marking both these sides and then we'll go to the machine and I'll show you um, the quilting. Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine and you can see I have both the front and the backs, the back piece of my bag mark with these lines that are one inch apart. So we have our center line and I told you wrong before, it's number, so here's our center lines, one, two, over, and three, four, five. So same here, one, two, over, and three, four, five. Mark a pin on the top like this on both sides because you're not gonna sew those lines yet. You're gonna sew them later. So when we go to do this channel quilting on our machine, this, this particular machine has a dual feed that engages in and out and it works absolutely marvelously for me. A walking foot is pretty much a, a must because this is really thick stuff um, and it will get you won't get even stitches so um, either the Bernina dual feed or the walking foot um, baby lock as well we have baby lock machines has a, a wonderful walking foot that you can use as well as any brand of machine that you might have for this particular quilting project you're going to want to use um, a walking foot or a dual feed whatever it is and we're going to go over here and I'm going to use um, in the quilting stitches, I'm going to use a stitch that is um, 3.0, a little bit longer. Um, it'll work a little bit better for this um, because we're actually doing quilting here. So we're simply going to start and I just have like a chalk colored thread on here and um, a straight stitch plate as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and go down the bottom, this pesky little piece, and we're just gonna follow the lines and we're just gonna go all the way down. And clip the thread, secure and clip at the end, and then just turn around and make sure the pin isn't in this one. And we're just gonna go all the way through all of these. And while this is really a stiffer, um, stiffer piece of foam, um, it holds it a lot better. But if you had batting in here, you always wanna go up one way and down the next, up and down. Because if you go all the same way, sometimes it gets to be, you get a piece that's a little bit um, crooked. So go up and down, up and down. Um, do not, do where the pins are here, remember. So I'm gonna finish this and then I will come back. Now we have both of these edges of the pockets bound. And so what we're going to do now is put them on the inside of our bag. So we leave those pins up here and then we just match this up on each side. And this is now where we're gonna sew down these lines here. So when we go to pin, you want to pin where those lines are not. Make sure you won't be sewing on them. Line up the raw edges at the bottom. You know we're going to sew here and here, so I'm going to stick another one in here. And maybe another one here. Maybe up a little farther. And here, because we know we're not going to be stitching there. So then I'm going to turn this on the wrong side, double check, make sure it's all smooth. And you're going to sew from the bottom up because you don't want to, you want to make sure this all lays flat. So for these, you're going to sew from the bottom up 
and we're still at the 3.0 stitch length and then we're stitching on the outside on our lines and our mark lines where the pins are we can remove the pins as we go there's one i'll stitch one more and then i'll finish them all off camera so we know our, that's where our mark is here. Move our pin. And we just stitch up on the line all the way to the top. So I'm going to show you on this side. Now see our pockets are all nicely. These are our little pockets and then we've got a big one here in the middle. So I'm going to finish that and I'll come back. Now we're going to trim these. We're going to trim them to 7 by 14. I have already trimmed this one. I'm going to show you how to trim. You want to start on the back and trim at the bottom of your pockets. And on the bottom of your pockets, you just want to trim a little bit. So maybe an eighth of an inch tiny little bit just to make sure it's all nice and straight and then we need this to be um, 14 inches wide so lucky me I have a 7 inch ruler so we're going to find the center which of course was right here this one and we're just going to trim with this 7 inch ruler or whatever one you have we're going to trim on both sides of the center to get our 14 inches. Flip it around. In the cover, you're just not quite sure. This is the center. Line it up important that you cut this accurately. So there we go. We have 7 by 14 and we have two of them. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew the sides together. Um, and what we're going to do here, and I have one of them done, and then I'm going to sew the other one with you, is we put right sides together here this piece you're going to fold and sew it together on here like this so you're going to do the same thing on both sides of one piece so the fronts right sides together like this and then for the lining and all the raw edges together once again, it's really important that you have a walking foot on because you're going through a lot of layers. We're just going to sew. Make sure everything's lined up good. All raw edges together. And we're going to sew down a quarter of an inch all the way. All right, so we've got that done on both sides. Then we're gonna take this one, make sure you know where your pockets are, and then you're gonna match this up with this. Make sure your top and bottom are matched, that your pockets are going the right way. Ask me how I know this. Make sure that you don't have one set of pockets on the top and one on the bottom. And then you just make sure it's all matched up nicely. And then you're going to sew a quarter of an inch down here. So now we have something that looks like this. 
And what we're simply going to do here is sew right along this edge. So I'm gonna fold this under a little bit. So right on the edge. So you have that all finished and then it's finished on this side as well. Now I'm not going to videotape this whole thing, but when you go to do this one, you're going to do the same thing. I'm going to sew on this edge, which is easy, but then when you, when it comes, well, I'll just sew this edge really quick. Actually, blooper here. When you sew this edge, you don't want to sew from there. You want to sew from the bottom. Because you can see what you're doing and you only have one layer of fabric in here. So make sure you sew on this side, on the wrong side of the of the outside. easier <laughs> all right so this when you go to do this now um, I would use a pin on one end and you kind of almost have to stand on your head to do this so this takes some patience <laughs> so you get it all in here and then you have to kind of um, work your way through it like this and I'm not gonna demonstrate it because I think it this one takes some patience it, it, you just have to do it and then adjust and sew some and adjust and sew some so I'm gonna do that now okay so I have both sides sewn together and I'll just give you a little tiny visual of how you kind of have to sew this other one when it goes to your sewing machine you kind of have to have it like this and you know at first you got to start with it under here and then you just move down this way. So um, that takes a tiny little bit of patience. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim the ends of these sashings off. We're gonna bind the bottom. So this is where a free, free arm on your um, sewing machine is gonna come in extremely, I don't wanna take my, laid off extremely handy and again I am going to bind this exactly how I would a quilt so I have a two and a half inch binding here put this under here like so and again I don't press my binding first and I leave a tail so I can match it up And I simply stitch around. So if you had a um, flatbed machine here, you would be wrestling it just kind of like I did with the round circle over here. But it is doable, absolutely doable. So I'm just going to bind all the way around and then I'm going to turn it over just like you would any binding and stitch on the front side, front side stitch the binding down. So the bottom of the bag is all bound just like you would a quilt. And then the next step is the zipper. And for the zipper pulls, you need to um, follow the directions in the pattern to make these. Um, and also it tells you where to cut off the zipper 
for this is the smaller bag and then there's a larger one too so depending on which one you're making um, and then just follow the directions to do this to put these on and then the next step you need to do is we need to um, mark as you can see I've done here mark the center of the zipper and then again we mark here the center of the bags and here those are my centers so we know where those are and then for these sides you know that it's this where we put these um, seam these seam bindings or whatever they are and then next what you want to gonna want to do is just lay your zipper on the top with your sides this way and you're gonna lay it on the top like this and then we're gonna begin pinning and we're just gonna take and mark my mark this to this our two centers together and pin and then we're gonna pin all the way across we'll add more pins and then in the pattern is a very very good diagram of when we get here to this one how we need to pin about an inch of a, inch away from both sides so I would want to do my center over here to make sure it's matched up first the teeth are facing down And then a right about an inch away, you're gonna put your last pin. Like that, and then so that this is down like this. And you would have it that way on both sides. And we're gonna pin our zipper all the way around like that. And then we're gonna add the top binding. Okay, my happy quilters. Have you ever had a defugalty? Well, I had one. When I was working on this at home, I was trying to get it done before we left on vacation. And um, I sewed the zipper in upside down. So I will tell you this. There are excellent instructions in the pattern um, for you. And actually, I only sewed it upside down on one, on one side. So I had to rip it all out. So needless to say, I decided, you know how you get frustrated when things like that happen? So needless to say, I was rushing and trying to get it done. My husband was waiting patiently for me to get the quilting quickie done so we could leave on vacation. And at that point I decided, okay, I'm just gonna finish it up at the cabin. So here I am, no makeup, hair, actually we went swimming this morning. So I have not taken a shower yet. However, this was the opportune time for me to take this because the rest of the crew went out on the dirt trails on the side by sides and some of them went golfing and mini golfing. So I'm here alone purposely so I can finish this with you. So you get a peek um, here at my sewing area. It's in one corner of the family room here at the uh, lake house and I'm gonna finish this here. So um, the directions on the pattern are correct and I don't think if I wouldn't have told you, you would have known that I sewed it in upside down, but I just had to get it finished here. So anyways, that's the blooper. Anyways, now I have it done and it's absolutely wonderful. The zipper works. And then what I did, there's just a couple of steps left here, is um, I went ahead and we talked about the bottoms and you can um, do these, either cut them yourself out of Tim Tech's but it's also much easier to um, use the pre-cut ones. This is even heavier than the foam um, that we have inside here. And you um, press this on on one side and then you just rotary cut around the outside. And what I'm gonna do next is sew on these binding strips on both of these pieces. So, I'm gonna do that now and then I'm gonna show you 
um, after they're done and pressed on. And we're just going to sew them on like any binding strips. These are one and a fourth inches all the way around, easing them around the corners. Hopefully you can see this, but I'll show you a better picture after I get these sewn on. Okay, so I had the two pieces of this heavy stuff, and what you actually do is you just, where did that come from? Is you just sew along, just like you were putting on a binding, only this is single fold, and then you simply just twist it to the back. like so, and then you're gonna take it to the iron and press these all down. And again, you're gonna use a piece of parchment paper or a pressing sheet of some type because this is sticky, it's still sticky. But anyways, it ends up looking like this on the outside, nice and clean, and looks like this on the back side. And once I press this one down as well, we're gonna iron the two of these together just like that that becomes the bottom of this bag and then um, once I do that then there's hand sewing you hand stitch this down um, and there's really good instructions in the pattern for how to do that you match this all up and you hand stitch it down I know I really dislike the H word, that hand sewing word. I don't like hand sewing. However, this wasn't hard um, to do. And I think because of how absolutely marvelous these bags are, it's absolutely worth doing a little bit of hand sewing on the bottom. So I'm gonna, tonight, when I'm, well, I won't be by myself, but when everybody's doing whatever, um, I'm gonna, and sew this down and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's all done. Hey, hello again my happy quilters. Okay, so here I am again at the cabin. This week you got to see me at my home at the cabin inside in the sewing room and then I'm doing this last final taping outside here because it's such a nice day today. It's supposed to get really hot though. So okay, here I finally finished this little guy. Terrible cute. Pockets on the inside as you can see. Um, so I have two of these. This was the one I showed you at first, and this is the one that we sewed along. You sewed along with me or you watched the video. So we have those done, and I want to show you a couple other sizes. We have this one too, and this is made out of the new Tula Pink fabric, and because I'm not at home or at the shop, I ran out of fabric um, to sew the bottoms on. So I will do that later when I get home. But again, this one is really cute with the new tulip pink fabric and the fun pockets inside. Hopefully you can see those, hi. Um, now this one, this one here is the mini Poppins bag. This one is the mini small Poppins bag, I think, I can't remember. And then, so that's this one with the tulip pink fabric. And then this one is the original Poppins bag. And this one is made with um, Jelly Roll that we had All Hallows Eve. I absolutely love that line of fabric. So this guy is big. And he's got two pockets inside. Very big, you can see. Um, I am told a featherweight, featherweight sewing machine will fit in here. Take it to a retreat or a real small sewing machine too. But this would be a great fun little bag too for overnight and what I love about all of these bags is they open wide they open wide so I think that's why they call them the poppins bag because they pop open so we have all of these different things and um, on the links below we have all the patterns and the stuff that you need to make them and I'm just gonna go over them each pattern comes um, with a set of stays so this one is for the mini and the original pattern comes with the set of stays that go in here that keep this all nice and firm. So um, you also can just buy the stays. So you only have to buy the pattern one time and then you can also buy additional stays if you want to make more bags. 
Also, the Inner Foam Plus for the bags, we have it both in the bolts, um, double-sided fusible. We have it on the bolt and we also have it in packaged at the store. So you will need this and all of these have two layers inside. It makes a really nice sturdy bag, so we have that. The other thing, this is Craft Tex Plus. This is for the bottoms of the bags. Um, well, there's patterns for you to cut this. I cut this one and it didn't go so well and I'm gonna have to redo it. Um, I really highly recommend ordering these bottoms for your bags because you get two of them in there and like I showed you on the video, two of them go together and then you hand stitch them on on the bottom. The other thing that's kind of neat is this and this is the Auntie's Two Handles. They're called Happy Handles and in the bag you get two of these um, stiff, stiff things. Well, this is Tim's Tex too. This is kind of the little bit um, really similar to this stuff that's on the bottoms of the bags. But then there's also this tubing and it's, it's not um, really soft and that's what's inside these handles like this. Um, so these didn't have handles on because I made the small ones. There's another one that's a little bit taller. That's you have, there's two sizes of this one, there's two sizes of this one, and there's just the one size of this one. But these are the smaller of the two on these ones. So the other bags are this, exactly the same, only they're just a few inches taller. And then you could put the handles on this one as well, but they didn't advise it for this real small bag. So we have all of those things, and I believe we have them all on the link um, right here on the blog post for you to order um, and have fun with these. These really have been a lot of fun. Um, the, this one here is the quickie one. <laughs> this this one was didn't take very long, but this one took a little bit more time. But gosh, I guess I didn't really know that it was gonna be this big. Um, but gosh, you could even use this for an overnight bag. I absolutely love it. I really do. So thank you so much for joining me again on Monday Morning Quickies. Um, it's been fun being with you and I'm glad I got to share just a little bit of my vacation with you as well. So until next time, I will keep you in stitches. Again, Marsha from Pine Needles Quilt and Sew in Rochester, Minnesota, and we will see you again in two weeks. Thanks so much.